So yeah, they're just putting up the uh, they're putting up the uh, stuff uh, now. Oh, hey, I got uh, the show's underway. Yeah, cool. Okay, bye. Hey, welcome to uh, it's August the 11th already, and uh, the Summer Games. The uh, see if I can say this right. Niagara 2020 Canada Summer Games. I think I got it right. Uh, are on, and there's this 13 for 13 thing going on, uh, where each municipality is paired with. Anyway, and uh, is just setting up. There's just down the street. I think we can get a shot of it down there. We got a banner here, 13 and 13, so that's pretty cool. Uh, anyway, uh, Lee Sterry, that is me. Uh, we stream Kevin behind the camera. We'll talk uh, talk more with him in a bit. We're going into uh, Fiddler's Poor House here at 149 St. Paul Street on a beautiful, beautiful Thursday. The humidity's down. The sun is up. It's great. Come on in, and uh, we'll get this shindig underway. Episode 31 already. Wow, we are, uh, of course, as always, fueled by Gale's Gas Bars. We are supported by Performance Heating and Air, as well as Verge Insurance, uh, our, our just intensely loyal sponsors. Back again for yet another episode here of Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry, which we are going to be getting underway in just a few seconds uh, with Disc Golf. Have you ever played Disc Golf? Apparently, it's like... Uh, well, it's the pickleball for golf. I mean, it's not the same, but it's 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 a it's a thing. It's a it's a all the rage. So we're going to be talking uh, about that coming up. Big event last week, uh, and a couple of other things, and a whole whack of stuff that's happening in, in and around uh, Niagara. So thirty seconds, and uh, we'll be right back at you. All right. And here we are. <sighs> Even though it's nice outside, it's always nice with a little bit of air conditioning on. You know, it's comfy, comfy, cozy today here uh, at Fiddler's Poor House. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, one of the hardest working men in show business, uh, Kevin Jack, is on the right hand uh, side of your screen. And, um, you know, there's, uh, I don't know if you remember. Uh, a, a commercial many many years ago it was actually for an antiperspirant uh, and I can't even remember the name of it now but it was never let them see a sweat remember that was their that was their line never let them see a sweat and it became a line in business too you know you could be got like a duck on the pond everything looks calm but the feet are going like crazy underneath well that's been that's been Kevin today <laughs> he's uh, he's been my duck on the pond Today, you know, uh, anytime you have technology involved with anything, uh, as they say, um, shite happens. <laughs> so, honestly, here we are with a what thirty first broadcast know, of twenty twenty two. I know, I know, and uh, and it all happened today. Anyway, Kevin, uh, our executive producer, does a great job. Co-founder of WeStream. Uh, uh, brainchild of uh, Kevin and uh, of course his partner uh, Brandon Scram as well been a busy season for you Kevin uh, in including you were saying a, mar a marathon Niagara Falls City Council meeting you you streamed oh gosh, on yeah. what seven hours yeah seven hours and change but I'll tell you some exciting projects are coming to Niagara Falls that are yeah. really going to change not just the landscape but the okay. skyline you know, we'll get the into skyline? some of that. Oh yeah, we'll get into some of that later today on the show because right. there are some really cool things that are about to be developed in the next right. year, two years, including a brand new 18-hole golf course. Have you heard about this? I haven't, but I'm liking it already. I know. Just when you thought that everybody was building houses over top of golf courses, exactly. somebody's coming forward and saying, "I'm going to build you a brand new 18-hole executive golf course." It's going to be sorry, not executive, a full, full-fledged, full-fledged uh, tournament-style golf course. And then, uh, speaking of sports. Last Sunday, we were at Ashbridge's Bay We Stream as once again we were brought in by the, the Ontario Volleyball, Volleyball right. Association yeah. for the uh, the Beach Volleyball Championships. And I mean, this was it was the provincial championships. But to give you an idea, the guy that won, one of the guys that won the men's was um, Josh Binstock. Okay. Josh represented Canada at the 2012 and 2016 Olympics in men's beach volleyball. Oh, so cool. these guys are the cream of the They're crop. They're the best of the best. And uh, and also something dramatic. We had a guy faint 
right in the middle of the court. So I'll share some of that video coming up later on the okay. show. Okay. I mean, uh, it was so hot, right? You said today. Just, today it's nice. Say, we had the rains this there. This would have been Monday, absolutely Tuesday. perfect beach weather today. Would have, but last weekend, Saturday, Sunday, just exhausting with the humidity, and uh, and it overtook one of the players down at I was uh, I was thinking court. about, uh, I was sitting at home in my nicely air-conditioned house at the time, and, and I, I was thinking about you down there and the players and uh, and everybody just way out in the open i mean you're on a beach it's it's kind of hard to get any cover anywhere and the equipment must have got hot like everything was well, yeah every variable every heat. variable you can think about about putting together a live stream and uh, we were dealing with it and it was just like the iceberg <laughs> analogy you know what if you're <laughs> watching the stream it looked awesome behind the scenes we were just putting out fires but as keeping us up and running as i mentioned uh on the intro here too, when we were coming inside, this uh, very large uh, disc golf uh, tournament championship what, uh, event took place here in Niagara. We're going to be speaking with Pam Fowler. She's with the Greater Niagara Disc Golf Association. Find out more about the event and the sport itself, which is apparently um, really becoming a coming a trend. It's a, it's a it's, a, it's been around for a long time, I think, but it's all, just gaining popularity like crazy. Yeah, there's more and more disc golf courses. I was talking to a friend last weekend, yeah. said that he played the course at Fireman's Park in Niagara Falls. Says it was gorgeous, and the event you were talking about was Richard Pierpoint Park here in St. Catharines. Yeah. So it's definitely growing yeah. in popularity. That should be cool. Also coming up around 1 o'clock, uh, Christy Hales, co-founder of the Lilawala Music Festival that uh, is going to be starting in a few days. So. Uh, Lots to talk about today, now, and uh, actually, uh, I want to talk. Uh, I want to talk to Kevin because we talked about him last week. I don't know. Kevin's getting all this stuff going on in his life. There's the Lila Wall Music Festival uh, site. There, we'll, we'll be uh, talking with Christy, co-founder of that event, uh, at one o'clock. Okay, so we were talking the last time we got together about Kevin being uh, chosen by mainly Niagara uh, as, uh, well, I, dare I say it, a model citizen. That might be stretching it a bit, but he got the honor, you know. Yeah, what are you gonna say. Do? Nail on the head with that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? But now, now the piezis de, de resistance, it, well, you tell the story, Kevin. Oh, Come on. yes, that I'm a, uh, I'm now... You're now a punster. You're I'm a recognized now a, a punster. published Arthur. Author. So hold on, Liam, a little... You know what? Can we can we get to that story in just oh, a second? Okay. I'm putting some stuff up All right. uh, to get up the show. But to tease people, I'm a published author, and one of my puns has made it to the signs of Niagara Nurseries. All and right. I'm quite proud of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, and again, uh, let me acknowledge our sponsors. You see the logos on the screen, uh, but uh, I want to get into that just a little bit more. Gales Gas Bars Limited, they are the official fuel supplier also of the, the Niagara 2022 Canada Summer Game, uh, as well as uh, our title sponsor here uh, on Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry. They are a rainbow registered business which means as far as the LGBTQ plus community is concerned, uh, they are uh, safe employers as well as safe business people uh, for anybody and uh, anyone on the planet to, uh, to be involved with. Also, performance, heating and air. We uh, thank you still, Carlo uh, and the gang, for being here as, uh, as our supportive sponsor and Mark Shirk, Blake, and all of the people that uh, have been with Verge Insurance Group for so many years here in Niagara. All of these born and bred Niagara businesses and we're so proud to be able to be, uh, to be with you. And of course, WeStream, uh, you'll see there on the, uh, on the lid of my computer, that's, the, that's how you spell it. That's how Kevin spells it anyway, and, and, and Brandon. You might wanna spell it differently, but that's, you know, that's your call. Uh, anyway, no, uh, all kidding aside, Canada's premier streaming operation, and it's just uh, so cool to be able to do this show. One of a kind, kind of, in today's media world, which is not always easy to say. People will stream things, for sure. They'll stream events, for sure. But not the way, not the way we do this program, and we do it live. And uh, in conjunction with, of course, 
Nick and his brainchild and baby Niagara 411, the Facebook page that keeps you up to date with any and all things happening around Niagara and right up to date. News and information site Niagara 411. Nick, it's always a pleasure to be able to share resources when we can with you uh, as well as your mom. Nick's mom, good afternoon. Welcome to episode 31. Also, um, I want to thank uh, the Beau Chapeau store in shop, Beau Chapeau shop. Store is just shop sounds better. Uh, Beau Chapeau at shop, uh, who uh, is a part and parcel responsible for me wearing these uh, chapeaus actually on the program. This one, this one I got there in Niagara on the Lake, by the way, on Queen Street, right downtown. Great location, uh, and uh, Kevin Newfeld and his staff are absolutely incredible in that place. By the way, so knowledgeable, so patient, because it takes you a while. You know, there's so many hats in there; it takes you a while to make up your mind. Um, and uh, this one is the original Aussie soakable, is it drenchable golf hat? So you can imagine. Uh, Australia tends to get a little bit hot sometimes too, so you dip it, uh, dip it in water, put it on your head, cools you right down. Very cool. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Speaking of puns, um, yes. So thank you very much. I was out um, playing. We'll get to this too a little bit later. Took a picture of a hawk that was cooling his feet in a puddle on a golf course. Peach of a sail at uh, Beau Chapeau, by the way. Uh, all. Right straight through to the end of August. Kevin, they have this promotion on there as well. So, folks, you can go stop by Kevin's store. In, uh, not, not this Kevin, Kevin Newfield, the other Kevin, on uh, Queen Street in uh, Niagara on the Lake. Stop by Beau Chapeau, you'll love it. All right, so uh, I'm ready to tell you the story of how I became a semi published it? author. And okay. I think in Niagara, this is about as big as it gets as far as comedy. All right. Um, <laughs> so, I'll set it up for you here. And we've got, I live near to Niagara Nurseries. And everybody knows Niagara Nurseries. I mean, how do you not? They've literally been there since yeah. 1926. Absolutely. 1926, Niagara Nurseries has been operating. And for a good portion of that, they were just talking about the history the other day with Johnny, the guy that runs it. It's a family business. Uh, he, his brother, his sister, they all look after the property there at 7th and St. Paul. Right. And a lot of people would know it for, um, for its catchy signs. Right here. Let me just... Uh, bring myself in here um, for their catchy signs. They always have uh, puns that either relate to the day or relate to what's going on, but it always has something to do with horticulture and, and plants and things right. like that. And sure. introduces me to a whole bunch of um, a whole bunch of plants I never knew existed. So there, are the, there they are right there. Niagara Nurses. Yes. Right, everybody knows them. Let's see what we Julian, got for Julian, Patty, Carlson. Okay. There are photos out here. Come by Niagara Nurseries. Yeah. Here's just some of the stuff that John and his team share and of course we go over there it gets very busy all the time during the pandemic i mean lineups were just backing up along st paul so over the years i've become uh, i've become friends with these guys okay and the other night we were out kind of backyard golfing with them it's something real rural that they just invited me out to and it was so much fun and okay. after our round or during it johnny was was telling us all that he doesn't have yet the perfect pun for the Niagara 2022 Canada Summer Games that are ongoing now. And he really wants to support the community, but okay. Okay. he's like, oh, I got one, and it has to do, I guess there's a plant called a torch lily. So that's on one side. That's on one side of it is uh, we, we carry the torch lily. As a, a play on words, we carry the yeah, torch, the torch yeah, lily, yeah, okay. what have the you. Torch, yeah. um, so I didn't think anything of it the night of, but you know, a lot of times you just stew on things, right? Like, leave it with me, and I'll see what we come up with. <laughs> Okay. So I think, you know, a couple of days pass, and all of a sudden I wake up one morning. Bingo, got it. So I text Johnny. I text him, say, hey, how about something like this? I didn't even know if he even cared about it anymore, whatever. Within half an hour, he writes me back. Thanks, already on the sign. Wow. And if you're driving by, and Lee, I'll put it up there. My you award made the Niagara winning. Nursery sign. Oh, yeah. So if you, if you okay. go by Niagara Nurseries now and you see this, that's a KJ original. <laughs> Good for you. Athletes, we are rooting for you. Now, say no more. I don't know why we didn't come up with that like the first time. Like that should have been right away. Athletes, we're rooting for you. Yeah, but you find 
Kevin, the harder sometimes you think about something, you miss the obvious. You miss, you're trying so hard you can't think of anything. No, you're absolutely right. I think that's all part of the creative process. It's like you fall in love when you're not looking for somebody. Eh, it just happens. I've heard a lot of uh, musicians <laughs> say that, uh, you know, sometimes they'll go months at a time and, and everything kind of meets a roadblock and all of a sudden they just get these creative juices yeah. are flowing in the right direction and within, you know, three hours they'll pour out two or three or four songs yep. and all become these major hits. And happens, happens to me all the time. I'll get an idea for, uh, for the show or I'll, uh, for, for something to, with my business or whatever and I can't write it down then or whatever but it's, it's just, I think, well, we always think our own ideas are brilliant. But anyway, I think, oh, I gotta remember that. And, I gotta, and I'm gonna go right home and I'm gonna sit down at my desk and I'm gonna, I'm gonna flesh this out. So then I go home, I go and I sit down and it's like, what was that idea? And, and, and right now, pen in hand uh, or computer fired up, uh, it just doesn't seem like such a good idea after all. <laughs> and, uh, and, and we overthink it and then all of a sudden, poof, something like this comes out. Athletes, we are rooting for you. Well done, Kevin Jack. Very wow. much. The accolades keep coming, Lee. Wow. <laughs> An official published author here in Niagara. Hey, that's good enough, you know? Yeah. You get one of yours on the Niagara Nursery signs. That's some pretty good status around town. No kidding. There are a few of a few very creative people that have roadside signs. And I can't... There again. I'm trying to think of uh, some of them, and I can't think of the names of the stores or the, the locations. But Oh, I know. C Color Your World is one of them on uh, the corner of Lakeshore and Lakeport in St. Catharines. There's somebody in there that's pretty clever with their, with their signs as well. Uh, and many others, many others. A few gas stations have those big signs up in there. They'll put some fun things up. Um, Kevin, one of the things that uh, was happening as well that uh, unfortunately had a bit of a glitch if you were trying to find, follow some of the streaming uh, of, of the summer game, and um, it was uh, too bad there's, I don't know, a f here and there, 15 or 20 minutes that, uh, that it might go down. But uh, don't not watch it because of that. It, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't we stream that was doing it. I mean, it wasn't Kevin streaming. It was just being no, streamed. No, I was, I was watching the opening ceremonies yeah. on Saturday night, and CBC was there, all the athletes. And it went down a bit, yeah. And was out for about 15 minutes. And unfortunately, during most of the speeches and some of the performances, I will say, though, from what I was able to see, Kudos to all the organizers. That performance that opened things up with DJ Shub from A Tribe Called Red, and I forget the name of the girl that was uh, that was on the fiddle. Okay. But, oh, my gosh. What a perfect blend of contemporary music, dance music, hip-hop yeah. music. It was just scratching all of my itches at <laughs> once. And I was like, wow, good on you guys. And, and again, we saw that uh, set up outside. Uh, well, they're getting it set up for the events surrounding St. Catherine's 13 for 13 event. And um, I've totally forgotten who St. Catherine's is paired with. I think, each, each I think they're paired with uh, Nunavut. Is that right? To be honest, I'll, I'll look it up right now. Yeah. We'll bring it up. Because um, each and every one of our municipalities, there are, there are actually 13 uh, local governing bodies here. In, uh, in Niagara, 12 individual municipalities and then the Niagara region. So there's like 13 entities uh, in our political structure. And each one of those 13 gov uh, municipalities and organizations are pairing with another area in Canada to, I guess, express inclusion and involvement, even though the games you're taking here, they are the Canada game. So there we go. St. Catharines and Yukon. Uh, first, per, first Ontario Performing Arts Centre just down the street from us here. So travel across Canada without leaving Niagara. That's the whole concept of this at the 13 for 13 cultural festivals. And I just thought this was such a cool idea. Uh, Diet and the Love Soldiers will be performing at the First Ontario. And hey, they're, they're straight from Yukon. Yeah. Yeah, so that's really awesome. It's cool. For First Ontario Performing Arts Centre, uh, as we celebrate and experience the cultures of St. Catharines and the Yukon. That's uh, going to be 4.30 until 8 o'clock 
Uh, yeah, on St. Paul Street, Performing Arts Center. I was just reading ahead, sorry. 13 for 13 cultural festivals. We'll see each of Niagara's 13 collaborate with one of Canada's 13 provinces and territories to showcase the unique cultural heritage, entertainment, art, and culinary experiences of each pairing during their assigned special night. 13 for 13 festival will rotate nightly during the games, changing from one municipality to another and offer complimentary admission. Complimentary admission. See, there is such a thing as a free lunch. Um, so that's uh, it. No, I just no lunch that will be served. Huh? No lunch will be served. No, I know. I'm, it's, it's, it's just an expression. I've heard. Yes, let's clarify. There will be lunch. All right. Well, but they said culinary. Uh, heritage. Oh, okay. So maybe there so will be So there's going to be something, sir. Yeah, maybe there will be lunch. But that's really cool. And I love that initiative. And it just pairs so well. 13 municipalities. All right, fine. We included the region yeah. to make the numbers work. But yeah. how cool is that? That is very cool. Um, again, coming up at about 1230, Pam Fowler, Greater Niagara Disc Golf Association. We'll be here to talk about the sport, the recent event, big event that took place at Richard Pierpoint Park. Uh, Christy Hales, around 1 o'clock, co-founder of the I hope I'm saying it right, the Leela Walla Music Festival. And yes, we will find out what that means. I promise you. Oh, I promise I'll ask the question anyway. Um, Kevin, did you get any of the uh, the things come through that uh, that I sent? There was a, a like what I called the pick of the week. Because yeah, I know we, I know we had some technical yeah, let's go there. This is this is awesome. This, I mean, is, this pick just jumps off the page. Now there it is. Etienne Klein is a world-renowned uh, physicist and researcher. He posted this, I think it first appeared uh, on his Twitter page, if I'm not mistaken. I could be, but anyway, he's yeah, director he right at there. France's Alternative Energies, and all the rest of it. So, that of course is in French that I'm not going, Kevin, can you read that? You're, you're, I, you've I got could, kids that are- I could completely Butcher this, but he's saying there's a photo of Proxima du Senator. Yeah. Uh, a star one of very the, close to the sun. Yeah, one I of the so. closest stars to the sun. There you go, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and many uh, and millions. And uh, 4.2 light years away. 4.2 four million or just 4.2? I think it says 4.2... Usually, yeah, usually it's like millions, so <laughs> yeah, I don't know, 4.2 yeah, million light years away? But it's close to the away. sun. Anyway, yeah. but that's not the story. The story is, is the fact that that item right there is no more uh, a distant star than I am. <laughs> uh, or you, for that matter. And it is actually, believe this or not, but it is actually a slice of chorizo or chorizo, depending on how you pronounce it, sausage. That is a slice <laughs> of Spanish meat. So how did this come to be? How did he get duped? I, to tell you the truth, Kevin, I don't know that part of the story. But uh, he explained it at first saying it was a joke and nobody, nobody was buying that. Uh, but he was just absolutely eviscerated on social media and has been made fun of ever since and I'm I'm sorry Etienne I just I couldn't I couldn't resist the temptation to uh, to put your sausage planet uh, on this on this show and I know it's not it's it's not Niagara based but it's still got to be the picture of the week for me it gets the picture of the week award it's actually chorizo or chorizo how do you say that is it true I thought it was chorizo but I don't know it's Spanish meat. I just point to it on the menu. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a sausage. So, Lee, can, <laughs> can I share with you a, a my, my pick of the week? Uh, sure. So, my pick of the week comes from the NRP and a robbery that happened in June at a convenience store at Lake and Russell. So, just up the street. Yes. I don't know if people would consider that downtown St. Catharines. If not, it's right on. It's, it's well, just it's beyond. in the core of the city, sure. So here we go. So June 16th, we're looking for these two guys. Now, yeah. the story goes that uh, one of them was inside. Uh, he started stealing some snacks. So then there was a bit of a struggle that ensued. So I the remember second that, yeah. guy goes in to help him out. Okay. And if you remember, so here was the initial release from the police looking for a suspect one. And I want to focus in on the age 18 to 25, 25 years, years of, of age. age and suspect two 18 to 25 years of age because right. this week 
they come they came to us with uh, with an update and Lee, I'll let you I'll let you read the update <laughs> okay thanks uh, detectives from the one district St. Catherine's Thorold office of the Niagara Regional Police Service have been investigating this robbery as a result of that ongoing investigation one of the suspects has been identified as a 14 year old male from Welland on August 9th just a couple days ago 2022 he was arrested and charged with the offenses of robbery disguised with intent to commit an indictable offense he was released from custody on a form 10 and then a formality to uh, making sure that he agrees to a future court date when they get this process underway uh, now as he is a youth his photo you did you say youth his photo has been taken off the off the off the social media off the internet so now why to me the photo of the week is originally i guess the reports from within the convenience store and then also the police thought that yeah. these kids were 18 to 25 hence the bicycle getaway vehicle and they're 14. yeah how like do we not know adolescence from well late teenager adult to be fair when you're being when you're being robbed you don't see things necessarily as clearly as you would if you weren't being robbed. There's a little bit of stress involved, number one. Number two, I happen to be one of those people that is, is totally horrible at guessing people's ages. I'm just, I'm just not good at it. Should, would I be able to tell the difference between a 14-year-old and an 18-year-old? I'd like to think so. but. You know, I mean, giving giving the benefit of the doubt, but again, hence no drivers, no getaway car. We had a we got a getaway bike, not really a speedy one by the looks of it either. No. There was another robbery, Kevin, that took place uh, at a petrol can station in Niagara. This is just one of those. Okay, so there's three people involved in this robbery. Two that go into the store, two males go into the store and leave the female out in the car. She's a getaway car driver, okay? So here's a picture of, uh, of, of the people in the, in the store. Now, it showed suspect three there, but as I understood it in the story, I thought she was out in the car. But anyway, I guess she must have been lookout. Yeah, I guess you also hold the door too, right? Yeah, you hold the door. You're on the lookout or whatever. But she, suspect three, was the only one that was apprehended. The other two suspects are still at large. And that's one of the guys that's uh, wanted for robbery. Maybe they don't know who the other one is. But she was went through the process of court and did one of these sort of Form 10 things probably. And uh, she's out pending a future court date. Okay, so Kevin, we haven't caught the, uh, the, her accomplices. Wouldn't it be sort of normal activity to, to keep somebody in custody and keep asking them, like, we're not, gonna, we're not gonna let you go. We're not gonna do the bail thing. We're not gonna do the you know, agreement to appear thing or whatever it is until you tell us where these dudes are. Now, maybe they can't do that. Maybe, maybe there's something in our, in our criminal legal system that prevents uh, them from doing that. But it just, it just seems weird that she can now, unless they're, maybe they're following her to, uh, to these guys. I don't know. Um, Scary, though, because this is the one where shots were fired. I know. I mean, that was so the third thing I was going to go to, is it's armed robbery of a gas station. It's a big deal. Armed, well, it's a convenience store. Armed still. means a lot of things, right? It could be a pocket knife, but in this case, shots fired. Whoa. Yeah. Hold on a second here. Yeah. This is a, it's a different story. I mean, we're talking life and death. Kevin, how many times have you been into... Now, this was obviously a gas station slash convenience store, as a lot of, a lot of them are. Um, how many people pay with cash these days? I don't, I can't remember the last time I paid for anything with cash, even a small amount. 
So how much money could they actually hope to get from a business like that? I don't know. Are they still after the smokes? Oh, I don't... But armed robbery? That's a heavy... That's a heavy offense. And there are, there are more and more stories, unfortunately, of people committing armed robbery on small businesses. I mean, um, the Fryan guys just down on Lake Street, and a bunch of others that we've talked about here on the program around Niagara, this has happened to. And uh, I wonder if the, uh, the incident know. at the Fryan guys was an impetus for them to close up shop. because it's, it's now a sub shop. Lake Street subs now after 50 some years. years in the community. Yeah, did we hear where uh, guys did, is going? You're right, they did say the Fry Guys was relocating. I'll, yeah. I'll try and catch up with that, Lee, but uh, yeah. you know, I'll buy some time here as we talk about disc golf. There was a cool event and Nick shared it on Niagara 411, so we wanted to find out a little bit more. The very first International Women's Global Disc Golf Event, WGE 2022, at Richard Pierpoint Park was held this past Sunday. Forty women competed in an international competition with two professional I didn't know there was a professional league, but I guess there is. Two professional disc golf players from Western Ontario that were in attendance. As one of the activities for the day, we began a kindness snake in the park. Kara Ann Ferguson, who was also a disc golfer, painted the amazing head of the snake, and the other women in attendance added pieces to the body. That's kind of a neat idea. Uh, and here you can see some of the photos here. Yeah, there's all kinds of I mean, cool little project. Yeah, there's the, there's the head, right? Oh, and, and we can add to it by placing, yeah, placing stones, rocks, whatever, as uh, to, to complete the body of the snake. And I'll tell you, Lee, A my, kindness snake. My kids, seven, eight years old, they love painting rocks. Oh, yeah. So it's definitely, it's definitely an age thing, but we can find out more with Pam. My, uh, my two-year-old granddaughter arrived from BC yesterday and she's playing with rocks all the time. Uh, Pam Fowler, Greater Niagara Disc uh, Association, uh, Disc Golf Association uh, member. Hi, Pam. How are you doing today? Very good. Very good. Yeah, I, I see you've got uh, a, a disc golf, do you still call them golf holes? Baskets. It's a, it's a basket. It's a basket. <laughs> okay. First of all, explain to us how, now it's been around a while, it's not brand new, but no. it, it really seems to be taking off now. It does, it does. Um, actually, it was first invented actually in the early 1900s, like 1926-ish, um, but wow. then it kind of fell short for a while, and then in the 70s, it really, really came back. Okay. Um, locally, we've had a course here in St. Catharines um, since 2016. Um, it was started in 2015, but the 2016 was our first full year. Wow. Okay. Now, and, and, and is that at Richard Pierpoint Park? It is. Yeah. It is. There's, what, was the for, what, what, what was the former name of that? Um, C Cup Centennial Gardens? Gardens. Cent yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Okay. Anyway, go ahead. Tell us about it. So, um, it's 18 holes. Yeah. Um, it weaves around the the park area, um, so it, it's a it's a continual circle. Um, it's a single loop, and you play it just like regular golf. So you you want to get it as least strokes as possible. Okay. Um, yet we have drivers, we have mid ranges, and we have putters, just like you do in in golf. Um, the difference is is we do ours in sometimes in very tight wooded areas. Um, so, like, we cross over the canal on two holes. Um, the back nine has um, it's parkland, so there's hilly and there's dog legs. And, and basically, it's very similar when it boils down to, to regular golf, just, you know, are these a like are, are, are these, um, dare I call them, like a Frisbee? Yeah. yeah, they're very similar to a Frisbee. Okay, yeah, show okay. us. So I have three of them here. All right. So this, this is a fairway driver. Um, so this is the one you would throw off your tee pad most times. Okay. Um, then we have a mid range, which goes, you know, not as far, but it's for more sculpting of your shots and so forth. And then, and then your putter for putting it in the basket. And each disc actually, if you take a look at it, is shaped slightly different. So the, the driver is more aerodynamic, so it will fly farther. And the putters can catch left wind and go into the basket a little easier. I never um, knew that. I, I I thought you just sort of played with one 
the whole time. So you've actually got a, your own collection of discs. Oh yes, I in my bag I carry about eight to nine discs. Really? We have, we have yep. There's special backpack bags for them. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So I have, so like I have my my backpack. So so how? Look at that. How and you've <laughs> even you you've even got a a crying towel on there. Oh yeah, I got my crying towel. Yeah. I got my birdie beads to to mark my stroke in case you forget. That's, that's um, we, awesome. We All right. Tag so how long? So how long are these holes? Like, how, what's the um, distance? So it varies. Um, in St. Catharines, um, the the holes usually run a little shorter than some of the other courses I've played on. Um, I'm not sure the specific numbers, but I know they're probably between. If I had to guess, 150 to 300. Uh, okay. Depending on the hole, obviously, and if you're throwing from the short tee pad versus the long tee pad as well. That's that's pretty. That is that is really amazing. Now, mm -hmm. so you had 40 women here from uh, where were they from? From all over the country? All over. We had uh, one lady that came in um, all the way from Pennsylvania. Uh -oh. um, we had uh, we had a lady from Disky Chicks up in Peterborough. She came down to to sell discs and and participate in the tournament as well. Disky Chicks. Um, there's Disky a great chick. name, right? Kevin. That fits into your pun category kind of deal. <laughs> Our, that disky chicks, I love it. And mm -hmm. yeah, so how how do you do the tournament? Do you uh, do you play in uh, like twosomes or foursomes or whatever, like they do in a golf tournament? Yep, it's just like a golf tournament, you have to have at, at least. We try to get three people to uh, to a, to a, a card. Um, if we can't, then we have to have an official go with it because it is official scoring. Right. Um, and you do 18 holes. We did 18 in the morning and 18 in the afternoon. Okay. Um, yeah. We were lucky to have a, a bunch of great sponsors from within the community for it. Um, Lancer, Lancer Restaurant sponsored us, Auto Doctors, Chili Agave, uh, Home Hardware. There's tons of sponsors to, to make it happen, too. Uh, good for them. Good, good, good. <laughs> and good for you. Um, yeah. uh, now, Lee, I, I want to ask a question here about, about, about playing. Uh, what are the rules about playing it where you lie? I mean, obviously in golf, you don't touch your ball, but you have to pick up the disc. So how many steps are you allowed to take and, and things like that? So you have a little mini. This is my little mini. <laughs> okay. So when your disc flies like this, you put your mini at the top so it's looking between you and the basket. Uh-huh. And then you can pick up the disc. Okay. And then your, foot, your foot then can stay within... A sheet of paper underneath the mini so i have that whole section that my foot one foot must be in and everything must be behind here okay to throw. that's a good question kevin yeah so so once you're on the fairway there's no real approach like you're not taking a running start you're, you're standing still how about on the tee itself well some people do running starts on on the fairway and some do it on on the tee pad as well um, a lot of us newer ladies, we do a standstill, but uh, a lot of us are working on, on getting our, our what we call a cross step, where you do a couple steps yeah. leading up to it. Yeah, as long as um, you stay within that area. As long as you stay within that area, yes. Yeah. Or, or I yeah. guess as long as one of your feet lands in that area when you release the disc. And exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, well, yeah, it's sort of like uh, making sure you don't, your toes don't go over the line during a long jump or something like that. Right. Right. Very similar to that. Now, what was the what was the winning score for for your tournament? I don't know because we all played in different divisions. That's the best part. Is okay. we have uh, we have so many divisions that we got to play in. Um, so we had uh, our female professional. We had uh, FA one, FA two, FA three, FA fours. Okay. And then we had our age category. So I play an FA forty because it's for uh, people forty and up. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. So well, it's like any club championship where it's uh, handicapped sort of. Uh, well, in in golf, yeah, yeah. Okay. What would what would have been, uh, what was the score for let's say your division? Okay. So I came in third in my division here yeah. and my score was in the mid 60s okay um i was what was par for your disc golf course mm, i can't even remember because it get for the tournament it got adjusted to what we normally play okay um based on um our propagators that we could have out and and that sort of thing so right. it, 
Yeah. Wow, there's a um, lot. There's a lot to this. There, there is, there is, and it's so much fun. Like we're we're lucky to have a, a um, the men that started it back in in 2016 and and built a, a good base for for us ladies to to come in, and then we've been lucky enough that Westminster Church um, has partnered with us and the three discs I've showed you the ladies can actually earn it by coming out to our league nights there's there's certain nights that they can come out and we teach them how to use it and after so many times out they earn their discs well that's 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 really neat now Lee I'll just hop in here what you're seeing here on the screen this is actually footage of the disc golf course, the course yeah. at Richard Pierpoint so, and, and I know you can't see this either, Pam, but we're just kind of taking, I don't know if somebody did this with a drone or what they did, but kind of did, yeah, it looks like a drone, and they did kind of a walk through the park. So now I'm assuming, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that you have uh, uh, leagues, et cetera, locally that you, you play uh, on a regular basis, or is it like a golf club where you just go out and play with your buddies? It's both. Okay. It's both. So Monday nights, the ladies get together. We have ladies league. Uh, Wednesdays is a, a mixed league, and we rotate because there's also a course in Niagara Falls. So we rotate courses. Okay. Um, then we have what we call our pro am, which is really good for for those that are learning. They partner you up with a professional player, and you play best shot off the tee pad. Um, yeah. So there, there's a lot of a lot of opportunities to come out, and then we we play for our tag. So if I want to go out and challenge one of the ladies, we can just go out and play, or okay. if we want to go out and. Yeah. Now, yeah. I, I noticed uh, it runs along that uh, runs along the water. You ever do you ever lose your uh, use your uh, lose your uh, discs in the water? Yes, we do. You we do? lose them in the water. We lose them in the bushes. Um, the the great thing about the community is we all take our discs and uh, when we have our discs and we put our names on the back of them. Okay. And then what happens is if they're found, then someone returns them to you. Oh, that's um, good. Disconnected Disc Golf, uh, which is our local supplier of discs, is not that far from the park. Okay. Um, and and uh, he ensures that he has a basket that we can drop them off for people to pick up. Oh, yeah, I was gonna I was gonna ask you where you bought these specialized discs, and what's the name of this uh, store again? It's called Disconnected Discs. Disconnected and, Discs. Okay. Yep. Yep. And it can be found on Facebook. Paul right. is a wonderful person. He walks you through what, because uh, so many discs do different things. So Paul will actually t sit down with you and walk you through what discs he thinks best for you. And he has several that you can try to see if that works. Um, great, great supporter. Who knew? You even have disc fitting, mm -hmm. just like Literally. just like club <laughs> fitting. Yeah. That is that's that's really neat. So uh, now I guess what would be the final question? Normally in a chat like this. If we've got somebody now sort of jazzed to give this a try, how do they go about hooking up with you and the group and going out there and doing it? Okay, so by all means, they can find me on Facebook, Pam Fowler. Yeah. Um, there's also our women's group, which is St. Catherine's Women's Disc Golf Club, and that's um, strictly for women or uh, children or people that recognize as women. Um, and then we have the Greater Niagara Disc Golf Association, also available on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And you can go out there and, and post, and you'll get all kinds of people willing to help you and get you started and uh, have a good time with it. Okay, I do have one more question. Uh, okay. The, the piece we read uh, about the event last week was uh, mentioned that there were two professionals that were mm -hmm. in the field. And, yep. and you use the term professional as well, describing yeah. a, a level of players. Yes. Where do these, prof do, is there a league of professionals that actually play for money and prizes and things like that in this sport? Yes, there is. It's actually called the Professional Disc Golf Association. Okay. So just like the PGA, just with a D thrown in the middle. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I'm actually a member of it. I actually have my, my membership number, but I play in the amateur division. All right. Um, so yeah, the, uh, there's tournaments all the time, constantly. Um, there's five or six courses in the States that we can go play. There's Hamilton. Uh, this weekend I'll be playing at Bronte. Um, I go to London the following weekend. There's courses and, and competitions. I just played Foxwood, which was an amazing, amazing one, um, where it's partnered up with the golf course and disc golf on the same course. Okay. Um, they had a huge tournament where you actually won 
um, placement to go down to the States and play in a huge tournament down there as well. Well, isn't that something? I had no, I, I mean, I knew, I knew disc golf was a thing. I mm -hmm. didn't know it was that big a thing. That's pretty. That's pretty amazing. Well, hey, Pam, Lee, uh, you're out of questions. I got one more. Okay, go. I uh, just have to ask you, Pam. Um, what is the hardest thing about disc golf? I think for regular golf, people might say just keeping the ball straight. For disc golf, what do people have the hardest time doing when they first start? Um, mine is putting. <laughs> putting, um, getting it in the basket. Getting it in the basket at the end. That that you can. Th if you can throw distance, you can enhance it. You can always get a little farther. The cross step will help. Your posture will help. There's things like that. But the putting is where a lot of us have to practice and, and repeat. Like I come out here, this is my basket at home, and uh, that was lent to me by one of the gentlemen. And I'm out here putting, and we play all year long. So like even in the winter, I'm out here putting. <laughs> Very, hey, just like uh, just like regular golf. Because right? yeah, yeah. I know I know with me, uh, what my I would be doing exactly what you said. Kevin and is just trying to keep it straight so it's not coming back at you or doing those <laughs> well you know, I throw guess, it up and it comes back I you guess know? in disc golf the the expression would be throw for show putt for dough putt for dough like the same exactly the, exactly uh, you're full of the liners today Kevin I'm all right fire. Pam Pam Fowler thank you so much for joining us uh, I think it's just such a it's a cool thing for people to get to uh, get involved with and and have some fun with at the same time so uh yeah really neat thanks for coming on so thanks for having me oh you're welcome good luck with the putting <laughs> have a good one go sink some yeah greater niagara disc golf association look them up and uh, if you're interested to uh, give it a shot lee i was talking to i mentioned a buddy of mine he's in yeah. his 30s he's athletic said how much he enjoyed playing disc golf. He's, he's into it now, he's got his bag, he's got his multiple different discs, hmm. and really raving about the uh, the disc golf course down at Fireman's Park in, uh, in Niagara Falls. So we That's got a couple right. here, Fireman's Park, Richard Pierpoint Park. I did and, know there was one there, yeah. And you know, more and more of them are gonna begin to, uh, to crop up. And you know what, uh, another extension to that, I brought our kiddies out to Brockland, or Brock Golf Course, and okay. brought them soccer golfing. Yeah, you mentioned that before. Yeah, I brought them last week or something like that, and they just had a blast. So all Thanks. kinds of different iterations of, I'll say, traditional sports. Yeah. I guess I guess when you think about it, you could almost turn any sort of item into a, into a golf-like game if you wanted to. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Christy Hales, uh, co-founder of uh, Lila Walla Music Festival, is coming up around uh, 1 o'clock, and that festival uh, starts in the... Starts in the few days i do believe august is it august, august 19th so a couple weekends 19th. from now yeah, yeah august 19th uh, to the 21st 19th to the 21st at the moose and goose in uh in thorold hey lee i had to throw this at you and i'll just catch you by surprise but last week when we were on the show there was the breaking news that that morning the nrp had cornered the wolf yes and that they they shot the wolf yeah. as they were waiting for the spca yes. to arrive and then Funny enough, I saw this crop up on Niagara 411, and I guess their job isn't finished. Really? Well, oh. <laughs> That's... What is it with you and puns and, and, and lame jokes and stuff today? Niagara Regional Police Service News wanted Wolf Cadellis. Yeah, there's the guy. Wolf, Wolf yeah. Cadellis. I think. Here I thought they shot the wolf, Lee. Uh, not yet. Not that one anyway. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, but yeah, I was I was still PO'd by that. And I know you can put caveats on that story about, uh, well, if the if the wolf had gotten near a child or whatever, then or gotten away and done some harm somewhere, they missed an opportunity. I guess you, I guess that's one of those arguments you really can't. You can't win uh, if you're if you're a police officer. You, you can't. You're going to get criticized no matter what you do in a situation like that. So I I don't really blame the officer. Um, it's uh, I just wish it could have been handled a different way. It's just one of those if only kind of situations, you know. But uh, yeah. Now here's something else, Kevin. I. I I don't know if anybody can explain this to us because I don't, I, don't, I don't really know the backstory. Except when we were talking about this, there was a shot. There was a picture 
of a white wolf-like animal that we showed, and it was posted on Facebook. Then someone from the Welland Tribune put a post up saying, uh, this is copyrighted material. It was taken by a, a Welland Tribune a photographer. Please remove the post. And then it was believed, or so we were led to believe, that it wasn't a picture of the wolf. It was a picture of a wolf, or a white dog, or, but not the wolf. But then the same picture showed up on the front page uh, of the St. Catharines newspaper, which is in the same, under the same corporate umbrella as the Welland Tribune, um, as, the, as, uh, as being a picture of the wolf. So, Kevin, do we still know what, the, what that was a picture of? I don't know if it, it was didn't look like a the wolf or a wolf. The way they were trying to defend their copyright made me think that it was the wolf. Although I thought it was funny because well, we were led to believe it was the wolf. Well, and Tribune was demanding that somebody like Joe Public take down their comment that yeah. included the photo. Yeah, you're like you're really reaching now. Like I understand if it was Nick and Niagara Four One One that posted it, but somebody in a comment in a comment posted leached it. your photo like. If you're going to wake up every day trying to police every single person on yeah. the internet that may be commenting and using your photo from Joe Public, it's going to be a long life. But we were kidding around to the fact that uh, it was it was a kind of a it was a dog, and and or it was maybe too posed or something. I don't know. I still wish I I still wish we knew who the subject of that picture was, whether it was the wolf. I'm trying to see if I can find the wolf. Well, the one that we think is. Yeah, I can't find it. Yeah. Um, You may remember also, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had uh, Dr. Kimberly Monk on. She is the Brock University professor that is spearheading the Shikluna shipyard dig. uh, And 12 Mile Creek there uh, near near the uh, Burgoyne Bridge, like underneath, right by the water. Uh, Because it was a... Major shipbuilding area uh, many many years ago, uh, and I just wanted to let you know that they just announced this week that you can that public can take tours of the dig site now. So look up just look up Shikluna Dig or whatever, and you can be um, or even probably on the Brock University page. Just do a Google search or something, and you'll find you'll find it. I don't have the details for you, but uh, you can. Uh, you can find it if you want to take a tour of that area. Now, be prepared. It is an archaeological dig, so you're not going to see a lot of actual artifacts there, but you'll get a sense of what we're talking about if you get, if you get a chance to go down there and take a, take a tour and see exactly one of the most historical sites in, uh, in Niagara, actually, as they continue to unearth a lot of these, a lot of these things that have been covered up for a long, long Very time. Very cool. Uh, Lee, I want to get in some, uh, I'll show you some of that action from last Sunday, Ashbridge's Bay, the Men's Beach Volleyball Championship, where he overtook that one athlete. Yeah. Um, but there's also this update that the NRP issued this, rele- uh, this release. Nick shared it on 411 about another arrest in that uh, homicide investigation on Clifton Hill. Right. And that was the one that involved the, uh, I want to say, some adolescents yeah. and the blue F-150 pickup truck. Uh, yeah, and it took, it, it took place uh, quite some time ago. Uh, further investigation has led to the identification of a second male alleged to have been involved in this incident. Uh, Wednesday, August the 10th, yesterday, an 18-year-old male from Mississauga was arrested and is facing the following charges. Robbery, unauthorized possession of a firearm, possession of a firearm in a motor vehicle, possession of property obtained by crime, theft of a motor vehicle contrary to et cetera, et cetera, failure to comply, uh, failed to comply with undertaking uh, as the suspect was under the age of 18 at the time of uh, the offense, his name is not being released. So, yeah, so they've arrested two people now. And and that's all that, that's all that they thought were involved at the beginning, isn't it? It was just, it was just two people. It wasn't like a gang or anything like that. 
So I think it was just those uh, the two people. So it looks like it looks like they've uh, kind of sort of almost wrapped this up. And um, did you get did you did you manage to track down my hawk picture? Oh, I'll get to the hawk picture. Okay. Yeah, I'll get to cool. the hawk picture. Yeah. Uh, here's this, and I might have to wait until after Christy. Christy's coming up here oh, at 1 okay. o'clock. Oh, that's okay. Um, so we'll talk to her about her cool music festival that's yeah. coming up, the uh, Lila Walla. Lila Walla. A bunch of bands over three days at the Moose and Goose and yeah. Road. Really cool. So scorching hot out here. And you know what? I'll just let you see some of the action. Scorching hot out there. Oh, oh yeah, geez. the volleyball stuff, yeah. You know what? Just then, it just kind of died on me, Lee, so. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Uh, it's it's, it's Murphy's been... Law today, ladies and gentlemen. I, d I don't know what uh, is uh, going on with the uh, how the stars are aligning or how the how the sausage slices are aligning uh, in our universe. Uh, if you had missed that reference, go back and watch the first part of the show. <laughs> um, but uh, all things all things technical seem to be stubbing their toes today for some reason. So that's why that's why there's a, a a pregnant pause, as they say, yeah, every, yet, every uh, now and then on the program. Yeah, we seem to be limping our way through the broadcast here, Lee, and doing a decent job. That's so. all right. That's all right. Uh, Let's see if I can get technology to cooperate. Some days are me. diamonds, some days are stones, as they say. Uh, the, the, the hawk I was... Oh, here we go. You're there. Okay, so here we are. This is Ashbridge's Bay. Now, the man oh, in that question was a hot day, is man. the guy here in the red, the red cap. And okay. apparently he'd been having kind of some health and fatigue issues. Um, throughout the entire throughout the entire tournament, and I mean you can see it here. So wow. this is the second set, eighteen thirteen. This is the bronze medal match. They're trailing. Um, you know they lost the first set. They're three points away from defeat now, and his partner is kind of calling for him just to throw in the towel. Like, okay. I, I can see that you're absolutely. You see him there. He almost stumbled and fell over, but still working up the energy. But almost ever every point. He was uh, he was struggling just to just to get uh, back to his feet. I mean, it's exhausting out there. So and he knocked hot. that one out of bounds, so that point was over. So here is uh, there's his partner there, the blonde guy, and the guy there with the red cap is the one that's just struggling, struggling mightily. Um, you see hmm. what happens. I think it's on the next point, and it's. Um, it's eerie to see. Let me, uh, well, I don't know. Maybe you like watching this. There's, so there's Ashbridge's Bay. It's a uh, Wii Stream that's providing all the coverage mm -hmm. for Ontario Volleyball Association. And it's a, uh, it's a very difficult work environment. Oh, man. It's a very, so you can see him there. He's having a hard time again, uh, just getting to his feet. He's exhausted. These guys have played, I don't know if it's uh, five or six matches over the course of two days to get to this point. Probably dehydrated to boot. They're, they're trying to take in now this guy. So it's it's on this point here. So if you watch, just after the gentleman, the blonde-haired gentleman here, serves, yeah. we'll switch camera angles to show the play and just watch his partner at the net. And it's, uh, it's eerie to see. And I only share this with you because um, he, he's in good health. But watch it here. Oh, he just just dropped. Oh my goodness! And it is uh, needless to say, it was it was scary as a as somebody that was there. There's Brandon there from WeStream, kind of saying, "Hey, you got to get in there, bring him some water." Everybody jumped to his aid. They responded so quickly. But here, I mean, if you watch it again, because you may have missed it. So again, when we switch camera angles, look at the man at the net. Oh, that's scary. Yeah, that was. That must have been really scary in the moment. It was. It was very scary. We, I, we didn't know. I mean, that was. That looks like almost it was. It wasn't planned, but I mean, that if if you were going to pretend to faint, that's how you do it. How long was he? How long was he out, Kevin? Did he? Uh, I don't know. I wasn't there next to him, but okay. it was. It was moments, not minutes. Okay. You know, I, I I don't even know if he ever lost consciousness. It looks like he did, or whether he just had such a just head rush. Just just was overcome. But uh, but yeah, that was. Uh, well, man, I I wouldn't want to be uh, in the hot sand uh, on those days because boy, Saturday and Sunday were so so hot. Were. I'll tell you though, we were treated to uh, one heck of a final, and again, it was uh, Josh Binstock who's represented Canada twice at the Olympics in beach volleyball. Forty-one years old, so kind of a veteran of the circuit. And uh, he ended up winning men's gold in the um, in beach volleyball on, uh, on Sunday. And uh, man, these guys are incredible athletes. He was a one-man wrecking crew. They I lost guess. the first set, and then he just 
flip the switch and there's it's it is really cool sometimes to be that close to world-class athletes oh anytime anytime you can watch uh world-class or professional athletes play any sport any sport at all it gives you a different perspective on that sport for the rest of your life because they they play the game totally unlike how we play these these games and that's golf it could be tennis racquetball squash volleyball any any sport at all if you watch a pro basketball any of them uh, you watch a professional play up close it changes your perspective of that game forever absolutely forever i used to play racquetball and squash years ago when i had better knees and uh and and you know we'd bang the ball all over the place it looked pretty pretty uh, unplanned and it was for the most part uh but the pros play it and they play the game like six inches off the floor the whole time you know just trying it's just amazing basketball professional basketball been at a couple of those games uh couple of Raptors games up very close and, and personal it's mesmerizing and I mean these guys first of all you don't realize how big they are uh, and second of all how how fast they move for big big and, and that's and that's exactly what I was trying to trying to draw attention to when we're yeah. looking at these volleyball athletes these guys are six foot four six foot five broad shouldered muscular in yeah. shape and uh, and then you know y y as you mentioned that it obviously goes to show just how scary it is when you see one of those guys uh, just fall and skilled the even even that even that gentleman that was struggling he was getting to some incredible, incredible. shots yeah. and 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 he certainly was not at his best no. and he was still darn good very Lila Walla Music Festival Inc uh, August nineteenth to the twenty first at the Moose and Goose in Thorold. And joining us on the program uh, very soon is, uh, she's here, yay, Christy Hales, co-founder of the, uh, I hope I'm saying this right, uh, Christy, Lila Walla Music Festival, is that right? Yeah, Layla Walla. Layla Walla, okay, thank yeah. you. Now, <laughs> now, now I'll, never, I'll never mispronounce it again. Can you tell <laughs> us, first of all, before we find out more about you and the festival, et cetera, what is Layla Walla mean? Where's, what's the source of that? Um, it's actually the legend, um, the original Maid of the Mist. That was her name. Oh. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's very cool. They used to do a thing at the IMAX theater all way the, back in the day. All the, I'm born in Niagara Falls. All the years that I've uh, thought I knew something about uh, Niagara, I learned something new all the time. Layla Walla right. was the Maid of the Mist. Yes, and it catches so many people off guard, and everybody's like, I didn't even know. So that's really cool. <laughs> it is really cool. Well, thank you. This interview's already been worth the time. <laughs> so tell us about you. Who's who's Christy Hales? What, where do you hail from? Um, here in Niagara Falls. Yep. Um, I own uh, IndieRocks.ca, so I work with musicians around the world in the independent um, scene. Okay. Um, I have a radio station on my on my site called uh, Liquid Fire Radio, so it's constantly airing music from bands from all around the world. Um, I put on shows. Um, I sing. I used to have a band. I have an album out there, wow. lingering around. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's nice and to meet I you. Have, you as well. Then I had the upper space, um, the upper space broadcasting studio with rehearsals rooms and stuff like that too for COVID. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Well, that's that uh, pretty entrepreneurial, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's hey, these days that's a great thing to be, Christy. No, no question about it. And where did this concept of the Layla Walla Music Festival come from? Well, a couple of years back, it was brought to my attention that Indie Rocks should have a festival. Um, so we were thinking about throwing one where the upper space was because there was uh, about an acre of land in the backyard. Mm -hmm. But the um, the business switched hands, so then we were unable to do that. And um, when that happened, um, Scott from PT10 Racing, my partner in this whole thing, mm -hmm. he um, he started up a Battle of the Bands um, as a, for sponsorship for their racing team, right. and um, he was using the Moose and Goose, and I sponsored their drums. 
And some of the bands that were performing in this battle also used my space. So there was this really weird cool connection, yeah. connection that we didn't even realize. Okay. And um, and I had run the idea by him. I was like, yeah, you know, I'd like to throw a festival. It's been brought to my attention that I should. And then we just started talking about it. And then he was like, okay, well, let's try and find a headliner. Maybe we can get the, the winner of the band, the battle, to... Um, to uh, be like headlining support, you mm-hmm. know, and yeah. stuff. So we worked it out, and it, yeah, that's how it. <laughs> that's how it came about. Oh, that's uh, well, it's kind of cr- crazy good. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Such is my life. <laughs> okay, so now let's talk about uh, the event itself. Of course, uh, the Moose and Goose, uh, a long, long time running establishment in in Thorold. Yes, is uh, is the host, and it's uh, ni- the nineteenth of August to the twenty first. Correct. Yeah. All right. Tell us about hours and what it costs, and who's going to be there, and all that stuff. Oh, sure, no problem. So we've already know the dates. So on the Friday, the nineteenth, um, I kind of been. I just kind of when we're talking to each other, I call it the tribute night. Right. Because we have th- we have uh, three top tribute bands. We've got Riders on the Storm, the Doors tribute. Okay. Uh, Blizzard of a Madman, which is the um, Ozzy Osbourne and Randy Rhodes tribute, and Social Distance coming down, and they're a Social Distortion tribute. But we also have brand new up and coming um, Volta Nova, okay, uh, Crooked Control, and Breaking Still on that night. And these all cl- these are all classified as indie rock bands. Uh, yes. All right. Yeah. Like in the independent bands. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yep. And Very I work cool. with them all. <laughs> all right. Uh, how about subsequent nights? Um, that's going to be twenty five dollars. That's on the Friday night. That's um, on the. Tw- that's on the. That's on the nineteenth. Yes. Twenty five bucks. That's yeah. a. That's a good price for that kind of entertainment. I would say so, especially with tribute bands, because that's yeah. I used to be in one a long time ago. Yeah. You make me yeah. <laughs> what 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 were, what was your tribute band attributed? Uh, we, I was in a tribute band called Mother. It was a Pink Floyd tribute band in uh, Buffalo, New York. Oh, ho, ho. now yeah. you're now you're talking my language. Okay, right? all right. So August twentieth. <laughs> let's let's move ahead to Saturday. All oh, right. Well, that one, um, Foolproof will be headlining. Chaos Above Glory is the winner of the Battle of the Band, so they're going to be the support for Foolproof. Okay. Um, and th- that one's. That night's thirty dollars. Okay. Because it's an all day, all night event. I was going to say, what time? And you've got a whole list of other uh, acts on the card. Oh, yeah. What time of day does this get started? Um, the, the doors are going to open at twelve, and the music will start at one, and it'll go all the way till two a.m. What for thirty bucks? Yep. Now, if I spend thirty dollars on a ticket, can I sort of like come in and go out and come in and go out? Yep. So I can go at I can go at one and then come back at five or whatever. Yeah. That's very cool. Okay. Uh, Did you want the list of those bands? Uh, well, we can find them on your website. We don't have to. Yeah. You, you don't have to run through all of them. The the headliners are good for us. Yeah. Okay. And they're obviously going to be the last ones on the stage. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and on uh, and on Sunday. On Sunday the 21st, again, it's another $30 okay. for that day. Um, the Mahomes are coming in. They're going to be headlining that day. And they're Irish punk, very popular, uh, amazing, great friends of mine. They're they're just fantastic. Okay. Um, supporting them will be playing with fire. They're a new and upcoming duo. Um, for those who like um, bands like 21 Pilots or Royal Blood, um, they really complement that that um, that whole scene right there, and they're okay. amazing. Uh, they're young, I believe they're about twenty. <laughs> uh, are, are, are we going to see uh, as your shirt is advertising there, Evil Elvis? Oh yes, he's on the Saturday. Okay, I'm looking forward to it coming down from Hamilton. Okay, you got to you got to help me here. You got to tell me. You got to try to describe what Evil Elvis is for us. You got to. Uh, it's psychobilly rock. Psychobilly rock. Psychobilly punk. Psychobilly punk. Yes. Okay. So you know it's rockabilly, but with that twist of craziness. The punk. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Evil Elvis from? Uh, Hamilton. Okay. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of a Niagara act. It's sort of on the fringes of Niagara, I guess. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That is. I got a lot. A lot of bands in here. They're from the whole region. I reached out and 
and then I got some from very far away as well. <laughs> Can we get tickets at the door, or do you uh, uh, advise getting them online, or how, how? what's the best way? Whatever's convenient for anybody. Tickets will be available at the door, too. Okay, all right. Yeah, they might be They might be a little bit more, so if you want to get a good deal, get it at the... I'd and we buy and and we buy the tickets per day. Uh, yep. Okay. Yep. Or there's a weekend pass. There is a whole weekend. The, okay. That's right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and there's your. Uh, we had the. We just had the site up there. It's Lila Walla, L E L A Walla Music Fest dot com. Right. Yes. That's how you spell it. So uh, just go on there and yep. everybody can buy tickets and all. That. Are, are you going to be you going to be performing at all? Um, it's hard to say. Some some of these people might. I might. I'm not really sure. They might drag you uh, up there. It might happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And uh, I, I'm so again. I'm so pleased that uh, to meet you. I don't know why we haven't met you before this, but uh, what is the what is the uh, online uh, uh, radio station as you call it that you do? What is the name of it? Liquid Fire Radio. It's Liquid. at indie indie dash rocks dot ca. All right, we'll check it out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Can I give a couple of special thank yous real quickly? You absolutely can. <laughs> okay, I would like to thank the uh, Moose and Goose for sure. Um, my partner Scott with PT10 Racing, SQL Media, and uh, mainly Niagara for being my marketing team and and really pulling together and helping me with everything. Um, Corona Security, because they're going to protect us and keep us cool. That's um, all right. Gobi Weekly for advertising and helping out there with Jen. And Rock With Us, Concrete out of Hamilton for sponsoring a band, the Big Heavy. All right. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you. No, no, any anytime. That's what we're here for, absolutely. Uh, Christy Hales, thanks for being here. Congratulations on your first annual. Uh, I'm sure it'll go great, but um, break a leg, as they say, and uh, good luck with it. Thank you so much. Oh, you are more than welcome. See you later. <laughs> Bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Yeah. What a great girl. I, I'm surprised, Kevin, that we have not crossed paths with her. At least I haven't crossed paths with her yeah. in, in the past. You know what? And all of um, all the companies that she talks about, I'm familiar with, but I'm yeah. surprised I've never met Chris either. Like, I'm familiar with IndieRocks.ca, The Upper Space. I was familiar with them. Um, some of the bands that she mm -hmm. mentioned, I'm familiar. I mean, even um, we've had Lady Lyrics before on the program. Yeah. Here. She's, she's part of the bill here at the yeah. uh, Leela Walla. And, uh, uh, steeped in history, too. We did not know the original name of the... Uh, what is Layla. The, uh, Layla. Walla. Yeah, Layla Walla. Sorry, I screwed Le it up. Well, I've been screwing it up all day. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's. I told you the way the uh, stars hey, um, are aligned. Speaking of screw ups, Lee, I was just <laughs> screwing up <laughs> what because did you do? Uh, well, I was thumbing through Facebook pages yeah. uh, that I forgot were actually on the active screen because what I wanted to do was get over to uh, your Facebook page and look at oh, this. Oh my hawk! So this is your hawk. So here, you set it up, and I can play the video. Yeah. So. I went out to play nine holes uh, on a super, super hot day, uh, which was this past Tuesday, uh, at Royal Niagara Golf Course, uh, just off uh, Glendale, uh, across from the Big Outlet Mall there. And uh, so I was coming up to the third tee, and there's a puddle in the, in the path, and this hawk, rather large bird, is actually just standing in the puddle. And I figured, you know, that's a smart bird. Uh, he's keeping cool. Keep his feet cool, he stays cool. And he let me get really close. And, and you see, he just ran up uh, while I was going really close to him. And then he came back down. I didn't film that part of it. But uh, he came back down and stood in the water again <laughs> to stay cool. I just thought it was the neatest, uh, neatest thing of watching nature in action, pretty, pretty smart bird. Yeah, and there, there, is, uh, there he is, just standing there. Yeah, he's a shy bird. He doesn't like his photo taken. No, I, th I think he's like an ostrich. I think he was thinking, if I don't look at him, uh, he can't see me. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Now, the something that uh, Christy touched on, and I'll, I'll share with it with you here. She talked about her being in a tribute band. 
Right. So here's a guy. If you look, who are these three guys? You know them, right? Uh, uh, yeah, Bon Jovi, Garth uh, Brooks. No, no, no. Hold on. This is a, this is a country tribute group. So oh. that's not Bon Jovi. Not bon that Joey? is married to Nicole Kidman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Keith well, Urban. Yeah, okay. All yeah, right. Yeah, Passable okay. Keith Urban. Maybe. Maybe. Passable Garth Brooks. Passable Garth Brooks, yeah. And who's the third one? And that's our buddy Elton Lammy from down in um, Fort Erie Way, Ridgetown oh. Way. Oh. And he is Zach Brown. And gotcha. Elton Lammy is an incredibly talented musician here from Niagara. There are just so many of them. Are we going to hear him today? Uh, no, we're not going. I think I'm going to play some music. I'm going to play the uh, Foolproof. She mentioned that Foolproof yeah, yeah. Uh, is part of the Lewa. Say it again. I'm Layla Walla. Layla Walla. Uh, music festival and foolproof. I'll play their video because if you remember our friend Shannon from the uh, the pole dance studio yes. down the road. Yeah, she performs in that video. Oh, so okay. I just thought it was apropos. We were going to play something, a new music video from John Lavoy, a local St. Catharines guy. But you know what? We'll hold off till later, just because it suits the topic that we're talking about. Yeah. But uh, I still think he looks like more like Bon Jovi than Keith Urban. But yeah, you probably maybe he does both. You know. Yeah. And, the, and, of course, the, hot, right. the, the hat sells the Garth Brooks look. Absolutely. And right. same with the uh, Zach Brown. So yeah. I ran into Elton. Or, sorry, God. Yeah, Elton. Um, <laughs> ran into Elton. <laughs> I think names confused. During the pandemic. And Elton's performed, like, all over Niagara. A lot of casino gigs, things like that. Um, he actually got some national acclaim. There was, a, um, there was a CBC show that they put together when competition shows right. were all the rage in the late 2000s. And he was named. He actually won the show for Canada's, I think, uh, bathroom opera star or something okay. like that so kind of rode the coattails of that and he got paid all these gigs to go sing opera which he had never really done before um, but I ran into him and he said you know what I've been doing for the last year I've been touring all over the states as Zach Brown and for musicians it can be extremely lucrative oh yeah to do tribute shows tribute shows so are wanna, amazingly why popular you doing a exactly and they get paid and people pay to go see them he's like you know what? I'm getting paid. I'm getting paid large to travel around the states and be Zach Brown. So, you want Zach Brown? I'll give you Zach Brown. Yeah, we. Uh, my wife so and there, I. So there's the three guys at a costume. Those are the same three guys. Huh. That's pretty good. I guess the one guy shaved, but. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. My wife and I, uh, a couple months ago, went to see a Pink Floyd cover band at uh, the Performing Arts Center. In, uh, in St. Catharines. They were very, very good. Note for note, perfect. They were called uh, pigs. And Canadian pigs or whatever it is. Ma because Pink Floyd, in case you didn't know, a uh, big classic band from the late 60s, early 70s, they, uh, pigs were sort of their logo, if you will. They used pictures of pink pigs a lot. Anyway, uh, but there's another one I noticed. I, I guess Pink Floyd bands are popping up all over the place, but there's one actually called uh, The Pink Floyd of something or other. And I was really surprised, as were some other people when it appeared on Facebook, they were playing somewhere in, the, in this area, that they were actually able to use that, the name. Uh, I don't know how they got the rights to do that, but they did. And uh, didn't see them, so I can't, I can't speak to... How good they were. And uh, just speaking locally, a lot of tribute bands um, have been put together as Safari Niagara once again used their amphitheater this year. They'd kind of gone dry for about four or five years, mm -hmm. and they have a terrific venue there at Safari Niagara. And I think they just had um, like Destroyer, a Kiss tribute, and 21 Gun Salute, which I think was a hybrid of a bunch of hair metal stuff. Yeah. And speaking of hair metal, I don't know, the, my Facebook is just littered these days um, as that tour that has a Def Leppard and Poison and Joan Jett is oh, making really? its way around. I think a couple shows in Toronto and then into Buffalo this week, and everybody I know seems to be going to that. Stuff. Well, you know, you know that this stuff pops up on your social media just because you might have Googled one thing or you might have opened one link and all, link, and all of a sudden this stuff floods your your various inboxes. And speaking of Safari Niagara, I drove by there the other day. And it was absolutely packed. They have one very large parking lot. And I swear that, that it was almost full. There were that many cars there. So it's nice to see these attractions rebounding 
after the whole COVID debacle has basically almost shut so many things down over the last couple of years. It's really good to see the business coming, coming back. Um, Lee, not sure where you wanted to go, and we didn't talk about this, but I, I got to go set up the uh, the camera outside for a final shot where we'll play foolproof. Okay. And Nick threw this up on Niagara Four One One. It absolutely touched my heart um, about a boy and a family in need, mm-hmm. and uh, and they're looking they're looking for caregivers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Did, did you see this one? Yeah. It's just gosh. Yeah. I'm I'm not a hundred percent familiar, but I did see the. Okay, I well, see it's the really post. here from Elizabeth Marie Chambers and Keith Chambers. Yeah, uh, a calling registered RNs and RPNs, nurses interested in doing night shifts for an amazing four-year-old boy named William in St. Catharines. William is an incredible little warrior who is easy to care for. He just needs to be monitored twenty-four-seven. We're looking to build a team of nurses to care for him during the night eight to nine hour shifts with flexible start times in our home. Responsibilities would include such things as preparing his formula for the next day, cleaning and redrawing med syringes, uh, shifting William's position throughout his sleep, suctioning throughout the night and personal care as needed. Requirements are trach and vent trained or willing to take one day course at McMaster, they do offer that. They're up to date vulnerable sector check or willing again to get one, uh, CPR certified, or willing to update his liability insurance, or willing to get that as well. In other words, people that are either already certified in these areas or are more than willing to go through the motions of, of getting it done. For those interested, please email us at Elizabeth Zahorchak, Z A H O R C H A K, at Hotmail. Dot com and that uh, that of course is William and um, obviously it's a family with a lot of challenges and uh, and needs and it's tough for parents to deal with a special needs child at any time but when it's a 24 7 seven days a week initiative uh, you have to reach out in some way and I thought uh, as did Nick when he put this up. A really, really good way to try to make that happen so that you don't have strangers coming in and out at various hours of the day. You've got, you've got, you've got sort of like a second family to, to keep, you, keep you cared for um, throughout the night, et cetera, so that mom and dad can get some sleep uh, probably and, and uh, live to fight another day. So. That's, uh, that's a great initiative. So if, if you think you can help in this area or, or you really want to give it a try, contact Elizabeth at that email number and the post is, uh, is still up on, uh, on Niagara 411 as well. All right. Yeah, thanks for putting that up there, Kevin. I did see that and uh, had to, I hadn't taken note of it. And stuff like that where you just, you just kind of wish you could help. You know, unfortunately, I'm, know. Not, I'm not trained. I've got two children of my own. Not, yeah. not that time. And, and I mean, you see... The comments were so heartfelt as well, and we talk a lot about um, about comments and how insensitive they can be. And these were the exact uh, exact opposite. Of, of that. course, I, mean, I would hope so. My daughter's an RPN, just moved back from Peterborough, and coming off mat leave. There's a possible right there. My heart goes out to William and his family, as does all of ours. I uh, hope they find help. It's so hard right now. We're in the same position in finding help for a 34-year-old woman, wheelchair bound with cerebral palsy. Um, hope you find a great team. Several years ago, we struggled tremendously to Tim. If you could, Kevin, if you could just scroll that up a little oh, sorry, bit, yeah. so we can tell Tim's story. Uh, tremendously to find part-time care for our disabled son. We didn't need an RN, but finding someone—it was great pay for a part-time gig—was a challenge. Best of luck. Um, and you know, this is this is something that we're struggling with in our healthcare system across this country. And in spite of the fact that our premier says that uh, we don't have a crisis, some of the some of the medical professionals, some of the nurses will tell you that we do. From a from a resources perspective, human resources mainly, and we're not alone in Niagara. It, it's uh, the case across Ontario. Some we've seen this before in the news. Some uh, emergency departments have even had to be shut for lack of lack of help, lack of staffers, nurses. 
Um, and uh, my, my daughter-in-law and my son just arrived here with their little girl here in Ontario yesterday from BC. And she is a nurse and expressed the same things as happening in British Columbia, that uh, the, the resources are just so, so thin uh, all, over the, all over the place. They have a thing, Kevin, I didn't know this. Um, they're called travel nurses. Have you ever heard of this? No, um, honestly never. And uh, this is something that nurses can do. It's especially, uh, it's especially appealing to young single uh, nurses because they move all over the place. If you are one of these, what they call travel nurses, part of this association of this organization, uh, A, you're not, uh, you're not members of a union in any stretch of the imagination or whatever. Uh, the pay is higher than if you work as a nurse in your community and you live with, I, I don't know how it all works, but um, things come up and uh, someone will, an administrator will call you and say, um, do you want to go to Kelowna, BC or do you want to go to Halifax, Nova Scotia? They, they need somebody for six weeks or six months or whatever it is. Uh, here's, what, here, here's what you're gonna get paid and they pay part of your housing and your meals, et cetera. It's like you're a freelance. It's like you're, you're, a, hired, you're a hired gun kind of thing in the, in the nursing profession. And I didn't even know that that was a thing, but apparently more and more it's becoming used by a lot of places just because of the, the lack of local resources to, to look after the kind of people, as many people as you need to. So I found that was kind of interesting. And uh, yeah, we have, we have our issues here. Kevin, uh, there's lovely, sunny St. Paul Street. I think that fellow might be a little overdressed. It's, uh, it's not that hot, but it's not that cold either. It's starting to get a little more humid out there. <laughs> yeah. it's starting to get a little more humid. All right. Uh, again, Gales Gas Bars, thank you for fueling this program as our major sponsor. And uh, all you do in Niagara, including being the official fuel supplier for the Niagara 2022 summer, uh, Canada Summer Games, and uh, also Performance Heating and Air, um, Verge Insurance, Kevin, uh, our hard-working executive producer at, uh, at WeStream. Uh, and I got to tell you, this, as you're watching it, kind of looks like an easy gig. It is, it is far from that. Uh, and today has been a little bit more challenging than some uh, from a technical standpoint, just stuff beyond our control. But uh, it has, it's been an interesting day. Kevin, uh, thanks for pulling it off and uh, making us look good. Things, Ooh, things you're that you're welcome, looks, Lisa. Sorry, I'm, I'm so busy you're trying still to dealing keep it, with it. I know. Keeping things, it technically together here in the background. Things that are things that are simple are usually not simple. They're just made to look that way. So, <laughs> yeah, and that, uh, uh, that would be this show. That would be this show. <laughs> Niagara, four one one. Uh, Nick again, uh, and uh, and all of the contributors to that site. Thanks for uh, helping us. Um, with content from time to time and being a part of this thing. We're going to hear from Foolproof, going to be performing over the weekend at the Layla Walla concert series happening at the Moose and Goose in Thorold starting Friday night. And uh, one of those bands is uh, Foolproof and they're going to play us off the stage. Kevin, have a great, great rest of the day. You too, man. <laughs>